In this video, we're going to be learning the basics of how solenoid valves work. Coming up, what do they look like, why are they used, where are they used, and how do they work. Solenoid valves are used to convert electrical energy into mechanical energy. Solenoid valves have quite a distinctive look about them. As you would expect, they have the valve body, but on the top they have a block which will have some cables coming out once the valve is installed. This top part is the solenoid and the bottom part is the valve, therefore making a solenoid valve. Now these valves do come in a variety of shapes and sizes, I'll just show you some examples here. The shape variation depends on the capacity of the valve, the pressure it's working with and the different internal mechanisms which we'll look at later on in this video. Why do we use solenoid valves? Well these valves allow engineers to autonomously and remotely control the flow of fluid within a system. This fluid can be a liquid or a gas, for example water, air, natural gas, oil, steam, refrigerant, etc. The list goes on and on. The solenoid coil on the top is used to operate the valve by passing an electrical current through it to create an electromagnetic field and operate the valve. This means if it is connected to a controller, it can be operated autonomously and remotely by a computer without the need for engineers to physically run around opening and closing valves. This allows systems to run much more efficiently and safely. So where do we use or find solenoid valves? The short answer is everywhere. Solenoid valves can be found in everything from washing machines up to space rockets, although we're going to focus on the industrial and HVAC applications for this video. Let's have a look at some examples. In commercial refrigeration systems, we're almost certainly going to find at least one solenoid valve in the system and it's usually found in the liquid line near the expansion valve. The solenoid valve is therefore used here to isolate the second coil and the expansion valve until it is needed. The controller then sends a signal to the valve to open and provide the additional cooling. Another very common application for solenoid valves in refrigeration systems is in the hot gas defrost line to control the flow of hot refrigerant into the evaporator during the defrost cycle. When the moisture in the air condenses on the tubes of the evaporator, it will freeze and cause a buildup of ice. We need to remove this to ensure efficient operation, so we open the solenoid valve to send hot refrigerant from the compressor through the evaporator instead of the condenser. Then, once the defrost has completed, the solenoid valve shuts and the system continues as normal in cooling mode. In industrial applications, we can use these valves to precisely control the flow and mixing of fluids. For example, to pour a perfect amount of fizzy drink into a bottle on a production line. We might also find solenoid valves being used in a production line to detect and prevent leaks. If a sensor detects a leak from the pipework, then a controller will tell the solenoid valve to close to shut that part of the production line off and prevent product being wasted and also protect the manufacturing equipment until engineers can get there and fix it. So how do they work? As we saw earlier in the video, there are a few variations in how the valve operates depending on the required capacity and the pressures it's working with. We're going to focus on the directly operated valves, which is the simplest version. With the direct operated valve, we have the solenoid on top, which is basically a coil of wire. As you may have seen in our electrical videos, when you pass an electrical current through a coil, we generate an electromagnetic field. This magnetic field is what we'll use to control the valve. We have two types of valve, the normally open and the normally closed type. Let's look at the normally closed type first. So inside the valve, we have the armature. The solenoid is placed over this and completely surrounds the armature so that it's at the center of the magnetic field. Inside the cylinder of the armature is the plunger and spring. The spring pushes the plunger down in a normally closed type valve. Because the plunger is pushed by the spring, it will sit in a down position to close the valve indefinitely. But if the coil receives an electrical current, then it will generate an electromagnetic field and this magnetic field passes through the plunger and will cause it to move upwards against the spring, therefore opening the valve. At the center of the coil, the magnetic field lines are the most compact and therefore the strongest. This is why we place the plunger in the center. Once the electrical current is stopped, then the magnetic field disappears and the spring will force the plunger down again to close the valve. With normally open valves, we again have the coil sitting around the armature, but this time the spring pushes the plunger in an upwards position so that the valve is always open unless the solenoid coil is powered on. 
There are a few different designs, but one of the simplest to understand is if we pass a current through the coil in the opposite direction, it again creates an electromagnetic field, but this time the field pushes the plunger instead of pulling it. When the plunger is pushed, it will close the valve and stop the flow of fluid in the system. When the electrical current is stopped, the spring will then force the plunger back to the upwards position and open the valve again. In this very simple version, the direction of the current flowing in the coil is what determines whether the coil produces a pulling or pushing force on the plunger.